Hello, Cast World! We have what we have here is a mannequin, a custom mannequin, as you might tell from the title. <laughs> as you can see, it's made entirely of EPS foam, and we'll get into how that was made in just a second. Um, this one is for a costume that's coming up. You'll see in a couple weeks, a couple weeks, I guess? Anyway, um, but uh, it's kind of form fitting, so I need some of these. Uh, some of these pieces to do work on them. Uh, as you can tell, I have a ton of measurements there, and I have even more on the computer you can't see, uh, and it's slightly off screen. As you will see later on in the video, I reference them regularly, um, especially when you get down towards the um, towards the details. And now you notice I'm putting on a mask. It's very important when you're working with EPS foam. You don't want that stuff getting in your lungs and making you cough and do bad stuff. Okay. Getting in here, we're about a minute in, and hopefully the video does not stop because it's been acting up on me and stopping about the three minute mark, and that is not good times. So I having me re-record the same audio over and over again, and having me say kind of the same words. I don't know, the audio is always different every time because I'm just rambling on and talking to you people. Hello people, I'm talking to you, talking to you in the YouTubes. <laughs> okay. So if you guys are asking, I'm just going to go over the basics of EPS foam for you. If you haven't, we're going to cover those pretty quickly. I'm not going to go into too much detail. EPS foam is sold in big cakes at the home improvement store. I have two or four foot by eight foot sheets. Um, they don't. They, I'm gluing together with e insulation 78. Um, you can also buy that, find that in the home improvement store. It's kind of the best glue I've ever found. And I've got a weight on there, if you had noticed, to uh, just hold in place while I'm working. Um, you can get thicker foams in other places, but I like the closed cell foam because it requires less finishing and it looks smooth and nice and it's lighter at the end of the day. It's, it's like less finishing, it, it finishes better. Um, it's cost, also pretty cost effective when you think about other foams that you have available. I don't use spray foam, I just don't because um, they're, they're a trouble. Uh, people want want to use spray foams, I don't know. Oof. Anyway, um, I'm starting with the block and I'm cutting them into tubes and to be pretty honest, that's all they're really doing for this section. We're gonna uh, cut them into tubes and then we're gonna go into detail in a little bit. I should mention that there's, a, I think I did mention in fact, that there's a lot of measurements, a ton of them, for each individual part, even more than um, you would like there's at least 10 measurements for this lower leg section that I just took. This is because um, you have to account for the jointing. Just because your say you're standing up and your your calf reaches all the way to I don't know 18 inches, when you're sitting down, the the place where you bend your knee underneath is greatly ex like it, it, it takes up a lot of space. So when you're doing armor and things like that. Um, and you try and put a leg brace all the way up to where your leg bends, you're going to get in a lot of trouble and it's going to be difficult to get the pieces to fit together and not pinch you or cut you kind of badly. Um, so it's important here to account for the shifting of the muscles and where they line up when they're bent and in their straight position. Um, and also kind of just the general shape of the muscles themselves and along with the bone structure. Which brings me to not just the picture, or not just the measurements, I took, I had several pictures um, that I needed for each individual part so that they were correct dimensionally, but also the shape and the contour, and everything else was lined up correctly. Um, these were just, peop just pictures of her in tight clothes, N not loose clothes, loose clothes are not very helpful because it then it's harder to see where the definition is. Um, I'll be intersecting or interjecting pictures of myself and what I'm talking about in a second when I go into it. Uh, not these are gonna be pictures of me anyway. Um, I'm I asked for pictures of, of pegboard. Now the reason for this is that pegboard gives a quick reference of positioning and shape and um, transition because of the evenly spaced grid. Um, if I just had the the kind of circumferences and measurements and references from the circumference, it might not be the right shape and I might not have the muscles in the correct spot. 
Um, so with that in mind, I kind of needed some pictures to make sure that they match. Each human has vastly different body structures, uh, so I want to make sure that's right. <laughs> um, now when you're doing this kind of work, I find, well, I, I think it would be helpful to, to anyone trying to do this um, to study a little bit of anatomy before you go and try and just make tubes. Um, uh, you want to account for first the structural uh, structural points um, and the structure structural structure bone structure yes the bone structure that's it yes use the good words use all the good words <laughs> the bone structure and then you'll need to account for the muscle structure because while it's easy to make a tube it won't if there's a tight fitting point it's gonna bunch up or it's gonna be difficult to get through um, and muscles tend to move around. Um, they, yeah, they tend to move around when you're moving. That's what happens: they shift position and they change shape, especially, especially in the legs and in the um, in the arms, which which is what we're covering this first round. Tochi, get out of the foam. Tochi's trying to roll around in the foam and spread foam all over the house, which is his cat duty. Get out of here, cat. I'm not petting you. Maybe I'll pet you a little. Rawr, playing with my foam. There we go. So I cleaned up the area a little bit because it was honestly getting to be quite a lot. And we're going to begin working on the upper legs. We're going to just follow the same pattern for all the pieces. We start with a general kind of block shape. We're going to take our measurements, look at them, and we're going to slowly work down to them. <sighs> yeah. So I still got my mask on. Still thinking about everything. Um, still shaping. Uh, as you see, I'm marking off where the kind of um, where the transition points are going to be, where they're going to start curving, where they're not going to start curving. Uh, that's just kind of a general frame of reference. And on the computer there, I have the pictures I mentioned earlier to help me um, sort of place where I want the um, the joint, the, the the shape. There you go. <sighs> yep. I don't know, um, I guess it is just kind of a generally good idea to study the anatomy of something before, of like a, a person or animal before you go about trying to make it. Um, that'll give you a better understanding of how things will work and how it's going to be built. Um, I see a lot of um, kind of, what is it, uh, quad suits, they're suits that are four-legged and they just sort of put the arms out as far as they can without any kind, it's just a straight like pole but the really good ones have jointing even if they're fake jointed moving working around the pole and those are much more convincing and much more interesting in my opinion so um, just something to think about when you're trying to make something your own like this um, it helps to know the animal bone and muscular structure <sighs> kinda simple but a point that should be made and a little bit of research goes pretty far in these cases. Um, as you can see I'm cutting off uh, layers into, into the general shape. Um, being sure not to cut straight lines because it, the thigh is not a straight line, it's a kind of complex shape. Um, and as best I can I'm accounting for also the torso because it's going to fit into the torso and there are measurements such as the hip um, hip measurement and the um, inseam that I need to account for when I'm attaching those two pieces together uh, and they will affect each other based on like what I do here yes <laughs> yeah they will because they are kind of interlaced in that way um, when you take your measurements, you kind of get a little bit of your hip, and brr, 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 brr. I'm going on. <sighs> oh well. Second one. Again, I'm doing these in pairs so that they're even and uniform, um, and both the legs are exactly the same, or both parts are exactly the same. I'm gonna do this the same thing with the arms as I do with the legs. It's the same story. Start with the block, um, kind of cut the general shape, and. It, the arms are even more so not going to be a tube because the elbow is going to be included in the arms. And I get to those in just a second, I think. 
Oh well. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you in a second. Anyway. Um. The jointing. I don't want to go into that right now. I've already ranted about this. Um, phone work. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to be finishing it. If you're wondering what, um, what I'm going to finish it with. It's kind of just going to be sanded down very smoothly and very, um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, yeah, these are the arms, uh, smooth, smooth down very smooth, sanded down very smoothly and very evenly because if I were to coat it in some kind of finishing, I don't want to take the chance of saying it coming off onto the costume. That's not something that I want to happen. Um, there are coatings and there are different kind of finishing that may be okay but um, for right now I'm just gonna leave it as I am I am considering it though really if I want to use this multiple times uh, we'll see how that goes or I'll send it off to the person who wanted this and they can keep it for whatever reason they want <laughs> um, <clears throat> with the arms I believe I'm working on the right now the upper arms or is it, yeah I think maybe it's the wrist no, 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 I think this is the wrist. Yeah, the wrist. It's not even, it's, you'd ex, you'd ex, it's not a tube, it's an oval shape. Um, establishing where you want to have your, your cake lines is important because if you're running your tool across it, you can pick those up and tear them into, tear, tear in them real easily. It's also a good um, chant, you need to have a good frame of reference, otherwise you end up sanding in the wrong spot and you don't have an oval anymore, you end up with a tube. Um, and the wrist and the arm is not a tube, it's much more complicated of a shape than that. It's like a weird flattened cone on some spots with the divots. <laughs> um, I do go into the hand here a bit and I do sand, um, make kind of a, not the hand, but the palm, the palm of the hand, I'll go into that. But I'm not going to bring in the fingers because honestly I think they would break off from me playing with them when I'm fitting kind of costumes together. And if need be, when I'm making this hand piece, oh I was making the upper arms there, there's those upper arms. There you go, you can see the biceps in the shape there. But going on to the hand, here's the hand, alright. Going on to the hand, um, if I really need uh, a hand mannequin I can buy one of those. Uh, um, I think that hands are standard enough where in it should work okay as long as it's not dramatically out of proportions uh, like someone doesn't have has a really small hand or a really big hand um, and I'm familiar enough with glove work and um, yeah we've glove work to know um, how to do that reasonably well my wife is way better at sewing those gloves but yeah um, the trick here, I believe, was working where the thumb and the palm was going to be, and then working around that uh, little spacing. Whew, just taking a breath. Um, I know I maybe should be going into more details as to how to how to how to sculpt muscles, but uh, it. I don't like I took a class on that I don't I, I in I, something I can't really explain in simple explanation in 15 minutes it's just not gonna happen um, I'm not I don't think I'm even that good enough a teacher to explain muscle structure in 15 minutes but hopefully you guys get a basic idea of how to start this on your own um, it's a little bit solid more solid than say a um, duct tape dummy um, and it's a little bit more, um, because you can join all the pieces together, it's a u little bit more dynamic. You can use it for various mo more projects. <laughs> and a lot of times those duct tape dummies maybe not work, f will, will maybe not work for, say, um, arms and legs and things like that. Well, there you go. Um, I just leave the fingers, like the stubs of fingers, just to give a reference, um, to maybe have um, something around the thumb but otherwise the fingers themselves I didn't add because they probably they just probably break off and if I really need uh, one I, like I said I'll just have a uh, hand dummy 
but um, now that most of the parts are made, I'm going to go into the torso work, and then I'm going to join them up in the next video. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, good times to all. And um, just going to kind of transition into, say, my ending speech. Let's see how that goes. I'm probably going to make a new one. Outro time, Cosplay World. Just want to say thanks for everyone who stuck around this far. We really appreciate it. Send us your comments, your concerns, your requests, and your thumbs up. They really do. Uh, are, they really are appreciated. And we really like seeing those in the morning. Uh, we also are hoping to get some more subs so that maybe one day we can get the press badges and cut down on the cost for conventions. Maybe even entice some folks to come join us, get us some more content. Um, that's about it. I just want to say thanks. See you around next time. Good times to all.